Hello, Grade Tens. We are continuing today with salaries and wages. Now, I want to take you back to last week. Remember, we started off with salaries and wages. We looked at the main differences between salaries and wages. Hopefully, you know them. Salaries are monthly, wages are weekly, or every second week that we call bi weekly. We will more or less pay out salaries at the end of the month. And there will be deductions for all salaries. So the salary earners will have deductions and then they will earn a net salary. So that net salary is the money the person receives. The gross salary, again, before all the deductions, that is the expense for the company. And that is the actual salary they get. But remember, gross salary minus the deductions will give you your net salary. Therefore, the deductions will be paid over to all those institutions. The net salary will be paid over to your salary earner or worker. And the gross salary will be the main expense for the company. We are going to look at that in detail in our next segment. Now, firstly, I want to leave you with two questions and just get you back into the groove. Maybe think about salaries again. Let's look at those two questions. Number one, what amount... Will Tando receive in a bank account? And then number two, what is the total expense for the company to employ all the salary earners? Now, I'm going to take you back to last week's journal. And here's last week's salary journal. And please, again, I'm asking you, Tando, what will Tando get in a bank account? And what is the total expense for the company? during this month. I'm going to give you two minutes to quickly complete that. Let's look at your answers. Now, number one, the question was, what did Tando receive in her bank account at the end of this month? Now, let's go and look at it. Hopefully, you read it carefully, and you will see number one will be your answer. Your net salary for Tando was 12311 And that's the money Tando will receive in a bank account. Why? Your net salary is the amount physically received by the worker or the employee. Now, number two, I asked, what is the full expense to employ all the salary earners? Now, the full expense will be your gross salary, which would be 51,100. But now we need to remember that all the deduction, uh, all the contributions, your total contributions, and this is the amount here, the 5,335, that will also be forming part of the expense for the company to employ these three salary earners 
and then your total will be 56,000 and it will be 435. And I know guys that you got both right, but now very, very important work. We've completed the salary journal last week. This is it. And I hope that you went home and you practice a few more. Remember, accounting is practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the better you'll become in accounting and the better your marks will look like at the end of each and every term. So the more practice, the better you'll be. Now, how do I post these columns to my general ledger? You need, now need to go and look at all the T accounts that we need to create for Salaries Journal. There's quite a few new T accounts, so please pay attention, look at them closely, and then you will fly through the posting from the Salaries Journal to the General Ledger. Let's go and look at it. Now your very first column is your, your gross salary, and that gross salary we said, it's an expense. So this expense will go to your T account called salary. So let's go and look at it. Remember in your general ledger, you will have two sections. You'll have your balance sheet section. And under your balance sheet section, you'll have your assets and your liabilities. The next one will be your nominal section. And here it is. Your nominal section will be shown here. Now remember I said salaries will be your expense account. And we will say it's a plus minus. But remember... The expense goes up, but it is negative for my owner's equity because my owner don't like any expenses, especially if they're very big. Now, what will I write? The end of the month is February 28. And I will go and write here gross salaries. Or you can write sundry accounts. Now, you see that I'm using abbreviations. Please don't use abbreviations. You need to write everything in full. And then the amount is 51,500. Now we created a debit here. Now we need to go and create credits for this debit. Now I'm saying it correctly. We now need to go and create a few credits for this debit. Now let's go and look at the salaries journal again. So here's my journal. And now my next column will be my pension fund. Now, as you can see, your pension fund falls under deduction. So we are deducting a certain amount for pension fund. And you will see this amount is 2555. Now, this amount needs to be paid by the business, the sole trader, the company, the partnership. This amount needs to be paid over to the pension fund. But if we didn't pay it yet, we still owe this money. And you will see with all the deductions here, we will owe it up to when it's paid. So therefore, all of them will be liabilities. Now let's go and look at your pension fund, your 2555. How will I write it in? You will see I'm opening up a ledger called Aldi's Pension Fund. That's my pension fund name. It will be a liability. And your liability now will increase with 2555. Let's go and double check the amount just to be 100% correct. 2555, that is your amount that you will enter in your Aldi's Pension Fund. So let's fill it in. Two triple five. Now the next one, your pension fund is done. Let's go and look at it. Your pay as you earn. Now who do I pay this amount over to? I will pay it over to SARS. So remember SARS pay as you earn is your new T account and it will be 9198. So 9198 will go to your new T account called SARS pay as you earn. There it is. 9198. And you can see that I wrote it on the credit side. So SARS pay as you earn will also be f forming part of your liabilities. And this liability will be there until you pay it. Now let's go and look at the next column. Your next column again, medical aid. What was your deduction for medical aid? You deducted 4,400 Rand from your from your employees, and that 4,400 now needs to go to your medical aid T account. Now let's go and create it. There's your health medical aid, that's your name, 4,400, and you will see it's on the credit side, because this 4,400 is now owed to the medical aid fund, because you took it from your workers, and now you owe that money to the medical aid. Next column, a very easy one as well, your UIF. 
Now your UIF is 440, and also we will use the T account name SARS UIF. So let's go and create a SARS UIF T account. You will see it's there, and we will also create this to show it's a liability. Remember, we owe this money to SARS for the UIF deduction. And now we've completed all the deductions. So grade tens, make a note, gross salary, that's the expense. All the deductions will be liabilities. But now, remember you have 51,100 51, 51, on the debit side. Now, that's a quite a big bet debit, right? What other credit do I need to create now to equal my debit side? Remember, your debits always need to equal your credits. Let's go and look at the next column in my salaries journal. Here's my salaries journal, and you can see my next column is the total. But now, don't get confused. How did I get this total? I took all of these amounts, and I added them up to give me my total there. So therefore, the total will never be transferred to a T account. We'll never have a T account name called total. Doesn't make sense. Total of what? So the total column is there just to help you to calculate your net salary. And that net salary is the money you need to pay to your employees. Remember, the net salary goes to the employees. So that amount is owed to your employees until you pay them. So let's go and create a T account called creditors for salaries. And let's take that amount to creditors for salaries. And remember, creditors for salaries, also a liability. Therefore, on the credit side, and then you'll see all your credits. Therefore, all your deductions and your creditors for salaries, all of those amounts will equal your amount in the salary T account, your expense account. And that amount, again, 51,100. You can go and double check and you will see. So therefore, the 34,507, the 440, the 4,400, the 9,198, and the 2,555, all of those added will give you your debit entry of 51,100. But let's now take your 34,507 to your creditors for salaries. Here it is, 34,507. And as you can see, the contra account for all of your liabilities will be salaries. You see, all of them will be salaries. Good. Now, your next column. Let's go and look at your next column, your check number column. Now, this column will only be used, guys, as soon as I wrote our checks. Now, when I write our checks, those checks will be recorded in your CPJ. So don't get confused. When you write out the check in your CPJ, you will also use that check number and post those check numbers to your salaries journal to show that you have paid each salary worker individually. Or if you use the, uh, the, the EFT form, the electronic front transfer form, you will just say BS for bank statement. But your next column, let's go and look at it. Your next column will be your employer's contributions. Now, what you need to know about employer's contributions, I have an expense side, but as well a liability side. So therefore, for every column here, except your total column, I will have an expense, because we have extra expenses to employ these people, but we also owe an extra amount to the different institution. So the first contribution is medical aid. And you can see your medical aid here is 1,900. So how do I record this in your ledger? Let's go and see. We have to go to your first tier account called health medical aid. And you will create this entry and say 1,900. And you will call it medical aid fund contribution. Now, where will my debit be? This will be your debit account. Now let's go and look at your debit account. Do we have it? Yes, we have medical aid contributions and this will be an expense. And now at the end of Feb, we are going to say February 28, we are going to say health medical aid fund 
I'm abbreviating. Please don't abbreviate in your exam papers or projects. And that will be 1,900. And as you can see, we have a debit for a credit there. Now, let's go back to the journal to our next column. Our next column is pension fund. And this contribution was 2555. Now, let's go to your pension fund. We owe the pension fund more. How much more? 2555. And now, we created a credit. So, where's my debit? It will be in the expense section on pension fund contributions and let's go and look at it your pension fund contributions now as you can see it's a test i didn't give you a t account for pension fund contributions so what do you do you don't need to record it on the debit side because you don't have the t account now but grade tens if i give you the t account it will be called pension fund contributions you will write it on the debit side to say, Aldi's pension fund, SJ2555. Be careful. I'm not going to give you thousands of T-accounts in a test or project to complete. I'm going to nitpick a few. I'm going to give you a few T-accounts to do. And you'll need to only do those few. But let's continue with the salaries journal. We're almost done. You can have a break. The next column, your UIF. So your UIF increased as well you have a bigger contribution will go to SARS UIF in your balance sheet because you owe more money to SARS UIF how much more 440 but now remember you need to create the expense account let's go and see did I give you one yes UIF contributions expenses goes up on the debit down on the credit so we we'll have February 28 we're going to say, say SARS UIF because that's my contra account and then I'm going to say salaries journal 440. Now let's go to the very last column in your salaries journal. There it is. SDL. SDL, we have a, a contribution here. So again, an expense and a liability. Let's go and post it to the general journal. Let's go and see. I gave you the liability size SDL. Now, as you can see, I created one for salaries, but remember, salaries they won't have any deductions on STL only a 1% contribution so it's zero for salaries and you won't have this entry but you'll have a STL contribution of 440 and then you posted everything remember I didn't give you an expense account for SARS STL if you get it you can just go and create a STL contribution account and you'll post it on the debit side but what's my final entries for all my liabilities I will maybe include a section to say, pay all the salary workers, pay all your liabilities, what do I do now? I have to go to each an individual liability account. I need to add them up. So in this case, I will have 5,110. That's the adding. I will pay them then, therefore, 5,110. And then I will pay them, say, on the last day of the month. And I will pay them with a check. So I can say CPJ. And now remember, if you have the bank T account, what will happen to bank? Bank is an asset, and bank will therefore go down. And here's my credit for my debit. Now, let's quickly do one more. Let's look at your health medical aid. Again, you add it up, you will get 6,300. So therefore, I have to pay how much to the health medical aid? I need to pay 6,300 to create no liability to have everything transferred. So therefore, again, I'm paying through bank. And with that, you can finish up all of your other T-accounts as shown here. You will just go to the debit side and pay the liability. If you pay the liability, you don't owe it anymore. Now, guys, I will see you after the break, and then we'll continue with your wages. See you now. Okay, guys, so let's continue with wages. Now, we completed the salaries journal. We looked at posting the salaries journal to the general ledger, and now wages. So let's quickly go through the key concepts of wages. So let's firstly look at wages. Your wages is your remuneration paid to employees on a basis of an hourly rate or paid weekly. So the amount varies depending on the hours worked. So we are going to pay them per hour, or we're going to say, we're going to pay you for per unit. Every unit you completed, we'll pay you. 
next one. Let's look at the next one. A pay slip. What is a pay slip again? A pay slip is given to each employee that provides information about the gross wage and then deductions and your net wage. The rate of remuneration, that is actually the rate per hour or the, the unit rate. If you create one chair per hour, I can give you 50 rand for that chair. If you create one chair in two hours, I can still give you only 50 rand, although you worked double the amount of time than your friend. That is your rate per hour or rate of remuneration. Your normal time, that is a normally a system according to which employees are paid at a set fee per hour. And in South Africa, mostly we're going to use 40 hour weeks. So each worker or each employee will work 40 hours a week. Overtime, yes, people like overtime, so they will get extra money. So remuneration paid to workers who work longer than the normal 40 hours, and that's also at a higher fee. So I can give maybe 150 for every one rand. So say you work for an hour for 20 rand, I pay you 1.5, so overtime hours will be 30 rand an hour. Let's go look at gross wage. Your gross wage will be your basic wage plus any overtime, and then you'll normally minus all your deductions, and we're going to quickly look at deductions again, and then you will get your net wage. So how do I get my net wage again? Gross wages, less deductions. But let's refresh your memory on all the deductions your salary and wage workers can earn or get. So normally they will earn a gross wage, and we will pay a certain amount to SARS, we call it pay as you earn. And that money goes to the South African Revenue Service. What else can we take from their gross wage? We can take an amount from, for medical aid. So if they get sick, they can go to a private hospital or some medicines can be uh, bought with the money they saved in their medical aid fund. The next one, the UIF, the Unemployment Insurance Fund, that's also a deduction. It's a compulsory deduction. So every person who earns a salary or wage is required to contribute a percentage of his income to the UIF. So whenever they lose their jobs or they're retrenched, they can get a certain amount from the government. And then lastly, the last deduction, your pension fund deduction. And that is when you want to retire one day. Therefore, you will contribute to your pension fund, hopefully from the very first month you work, and then you can retire, hopefully, at a nice age of 60 or 65. And then you don't need to be dependent on the state or SASA to get a certain amount from them. But contributions. What contributions do we have? The same thing. Again, UIF contributions. It's compulsory. You have a pension fund, which is optional. Medical aid fund, which is optional. And then also skills to live, uh, development levy, which is compulsory. So that's the four deduction, uh, the, the four contributions the employer can make. Now remember, all contributions will be extra expenses to any business. So if they employ someone, they earn a wage. Remember, the gross wage will be the expense for the business. And then also the contributions. That's an extra expense for the business. Now, these contributions, you will see, I want to emphasize the UIF and the STL, as you can see, let's underline it quickly, the UIF and the STL will always be at 1%. Now, remember this, guys, if I don't give you a percentage in your exam or in a project, know that you need to use 1% for the contribution and 1% for the deduction. But let's jump into information to complete a wage journal. It's very similar than the salaries journal. So, required, I'm going to ask this and read it with you. The information below applies to the employees of the firm, Nao Traders. Now we need to use this information to complete the wage journal for the week ended. And you can see we are now going to pay these workers, these employees will get a weekly wage. And we need to do it for the end of February. Now let's go and read the information. The information states, Neo traders have a working week of 40 hours. So they expect of all their wage workers to work 40 hours. Now, workers who work more than 40 hours a week will be paid 
at the overtime rate of 1.5 times. So if they get one rand an hour, if it's overtime, they'll get one rand 50. If it's 100 rand an hour, what will they earn as an uh, overtime rate? 150 per hour then. But let's go and look at this company's rates. They said the basic rate for all workers is 40 rand per hour. Great. So every worker earns the same amount of money here. Let's continue with the word, wording here. They say the following workers work the following hours for the week ended. Touchy tune. And I see there's a mistake. Let's quickly fix it. It's actually the 28th of February. Now, I have number one, Bradley, number two, Sean, and then number three, Ben. What do I need to do? I need to go and look at Bradley. How many hours did Bradley work? He worked 42 hours, so therefore, 40 hours will be normal. And now, how many hours did he work over time? He worked two hours over time. Now, I'm showing that to you. Now, Sean only worked 38 hours, so did he get to his full weekly hours? He did not. He only worked 38 hours. So we'll only pay him for 38 hours. Then Ben, and you can see Ben is the only guy that's married here. He worked 48 hours. He's got a family to support. So therefore he worked a bit more over time. And you will see he worked 8 hours over time because I say 48 hours minus 40. That will give you your 8 hours of overtime. Let's continue now. Now the information relates. They say deductions for the week ended. For 28 February is as follow. We have number one, pay as you earn. And remember, it's SARS pay as you earn. We're giving this money to SARS. 50% of the gross wages will be going to SARS. Let's continue. Pension fund, an amount equal to 5% of the gross wage is deducted, deducted weekly from the wages for the pension fund. Near traders contribute to 1 rand 50 for every one rand contributed by the employees. So this piece here will be your contributions. Then the medical aid, they say membership is compulsory. Every member needs to, to belong to the medical aid. And married members pay 80 rand per week and unmarried members pay 50 rand a week. The firm contributes to the medical aid on a rand for a rand basis. So if I give 50, they give 50. Uh, if I as a worker give 80, the company will give, or the business will give 80. Then UIF is 1% of your gross wage. And again, NAO traders will also pay the same amount. So they will pay, pay and contribute an equal amount. And then the last one, the trade union. It is compulsory for each employee to belong to the workers' union and they will pay 25 rand to belong to this union. The workers will pay this. It's not a contribution. Now, let's go and look at the columns for your wages journal. Now, here it is. I have the name of the employee as a very first column, just like with the salaries, guys. So remember, your salaries, you need your names for the salary employees, and the same thing for the wage employees. So you have your Bradley, you have Sean, and you have Ben as your wage workers. Now, you will see that you have now two new sections. Your section number one, so let's call it S1, in section number two. Now, section number one, you'll have normal time, and section number two, you'll have overtime. Now, this is very easy, guys. Please pay attention. You'll see, if you listen carefully, you'll get this very fast. You'll be able to complete this as well very fast, in record time, you'll save time, and then you can spend more time on the more difficult questions. So this is not a difficult question. Now, can you remember, Bradley worked 42 hours, Sean worked 38 hours, and then Ben worked 48 hours. Now remember, normal time is again how many hours a week? Only 40. And therefore, if they worked less than 40, we will pay them for the amount of hours worked. So let's go and look at your section one, your normal time. So the rate for all of them is the same. It's 40 rand. Good. So there we fill in the rate and then the hours. Remember, Bradley, 40 hours, Sean, 38 hours, and then Ben, 40 hours. What do I need to do? I need to go and multiply these with each other. 
So we need to take 40 times 40, and then you'll get your 1,600. If you say 40 times 38, you'll get 1,520. And then the next one, 40 times 40, that will give you 1,600 as well. Now, that is your normal time. Do you see? Now, over time, we already calculated the hours that each one worked over time. Sean didn't even work 40 hours, so he can't earn any overtime. But Bradley worked two hours over time, and then Ben worked eight hours over time. Remember, we looked at the information very carefully just before we went over onto the wages journal. Now, let's go and calculate. Two hours over time for Bradley. And how many hours over time for Ben? Again, eight. But now, what is the rate? We need to say the rate was normal time, 40. We need to take it times by 1.5. And you will see the overtime rate for each worker is 60 rand now. Because they earn one and a half times in their overtime hours. So, let's quickly look at it. Your rate times the hours, so 60 times 2 will give you 120. And then again, 60 times 8 will give you 480 rand. Now that is again your two new sections in your wage journal. Remember, your salaries, salary employees, they will just earn a monthly salary. They will work overtime and they will mostly do it because they're in a management position. But your wage earners, your employees that earn wages, they will want to earn an overtime rate because otherwise they won't be encouraged to work overtime. But now, let's go further. What is their gross wage then at the end of the month? Let's go and see. What I now need to do is I need to take the basic wage and then the overtime and add it up. So if you take these two amounts and you add that up, you will get the gross wage. And as you can see, Bradley's gross wage is 1,720. Now this one is quite easy. It's 1,520 plus nothing. That will equal your 1,520. And then the last guy, Ben, 1,600 plus 480. And that will give you your 2,080. Now, can you remember the percentage that we need to um, pay over to SARS on their gross wage. It's 15%. So again, take your calculators and say 1,720 times 15%, then you will get your pay as you earn amount. And as you can see, I'm going to do it with each employee, and therefore each employee will have a deduction of pay as you earn. Pension fund, if you go and look at the information, I just want to show you again so that you're not, not confused. The pension fund, again, is 5%. So again, what do you do? You take your calculator. It's very easy. You take the gross wages. So you take these three amounts and you times by 5% to get your pension fund deduction. What do I do with medical aid? Remember, let's go and read it again. We have a bit of time. Your medical aid membership is compulsory, so every guy needs to belong to the medical aid. Married members, married members, Ben is married, the other two unmarried will pay 80. So therefore, if they're unmarried, they'll pay 50. Let's go and fill it in. There it is. Medical aid, 50, 50, and 80. So therefore, you will get easy marks here. And then, always round off to the nearest rand. That's what I did here. 1% for UIF, and therefore you take again your gross wage, so your gross wage, all those amounts a year again, you take all three times by 1%, and then you will get your UIF amount, and then remember, every worker, all of them, belong to the trade union, and it was 25 rand, so you just fill in your 25 rand in for each and every one, and now, what do I do? I take your deductions. So we will take your pay as you earn, your pension fund, your medical aid, your UIF, and your union membership. And we'll add all of them up to get your total. What is that? Your total deductions. And this is just a help column. This column helps you 
to get your net wage. How do I get my net wage again? I take my gross wage minus the deductions to equal the net wage. So what do I do? I take the 1720 minus your 411 and therefore you'll get your 1309. And the same thing, let's quickly do Ben. Your 2080 minus your 542 to give you your 1538. And then lastly, your contributions. Now this needs to actually move in here. I didn't have enough space. Remember, your contributions will be your pension fund on a, a certain rate. I think it was 1 Rand 50 for every 1 Rand. So therefore, you will take your pension fund times by 1.5. Your medical aid was again 1 Rand for every 1 Rand. So whatever the employee gives, the employer will give. And then also UIF will be 1%. And that we already calculated in your UIF column. Now, guys, we completed the wage journal very quickly. Go over it in your break. And then we're going to quickly see how to post the wage journal to the general ledger. See you now. Okay, great. Ten. So this actually is a nice revision um, section on how to post your salaries and wages to the general ledger. So we already posted the salaries journal to the general ledger. What we'll do now is we're going to post the wages journal to the general ledger. The same thing applies. Remember, we have a lot of new T accounts that you need to remember. Remember, what is my expenses? What is the business's expense to employ wage workers? It will be their gross wage and all their contributions. And then, what amounts will be owed to the different institutions and to the workers? That will be your net wage and all your deductions and your contributions. All of those amounts will be owed to different institutions and to your workers. Now, let's go and look at how to post the wages journal to the general ledger. Now, as you can see, I did not add up your normal time or your overtime because my key amount here is your gross wage. I want the gross wage, so we'll take the gross wage to my nominal section and that will be also your wages T account. So let's go to your wages T account. Now a way to write it in is we can say February 28 and we can say gross wage or we can say sundry accounts. Why can we use it as sundry accounts? Because sundry accounts means different accounts, a lot of different accounts. And the amount, let's quickly go and look at the amount. I didn't highlight it, so let's go and see it's 5,320. So that's your expense for the week to employ these guys. So let's go to my uh, general ledger and say 5,320. And remember, expense will increase on the debit side, but although it's bad for your owner's equity. Let's go to the next column, which is all your deductions. Now remember I said all deductions will be liabilities and all liabilities will go to the credit side. Now what's your very first deduction? Your very first deduction will be pay as you earn, but remember we're going to use a T account called SARS pay as you earn. So let's go and look for SARS pay as you earn. Do I have it? Let's go and see. There it is. Now, SARS pay as you earn a liability on the credit side. Remember, liabilities are minus plus. And I'll create a date. What is my contra account? My contra account is wages. I will use the wages journal and then the amount. So let's go and make double sure. What is the amount? I added everything up and I got 796. So let's take 796 to my SARS pay as you earn, 796. And there's another nice two marks. Let's go on to the next column. Remember your next column, also a deduction, a pension fund. I'm taking 266 to my pension fund on the credit side. I owe the institution until I pay it. So again, my pension fund, liability, so therefore minus plus. Your liabilities go up to double six. 
what's your next one? I actually want to leave you for this one. Let's go and see. The medical aid fund. What is the amount? It's 180. I want to quickly give you a minute. Take this medical aid fund column to the respective T account. Let's go and see. Hope you get it. One minute. guys I know you know that medical aid deductions will be shown as a liability it will be shown on the credit side of the T account and remember this medical aid we call the name of the medical aid is just a random name health medical aid fund and remember you had to take your amount to health medical aid fund on the credit side so minus plus we can also just make a note and say it's a liability and did you remember it was 180 rand now let's quickly go and do the next two Let's do it together and save a bit of time. What's my next two? My UIF, also a liability. And then your union, also a liability. 53 and 75. So where will I place it? I know you know. You, you'll go to your SARS UIF. You'll take it to the credit side. Uh, on the SARS UIF, your contract account, account again, wages, 53. And let's see. Do I have a T account for the trade union? Let's see. No. So what we, can we do? We can create one quickly and we can say trade union. And you see, you do it very neatly. It was not asked. I just want to show you. What do I do? I say February 28 and I can say wages because that's my contra account. Remember, we debited wages with a big amount, the gross wage. We say wage journal and 75 rand. And that's what you can do if you are still struggling. I encourage you, great teams. Draw T accounts. Use, make use of all these T accounts. It will really benefit you. If you know the T accounts, you can really do well in accounting. But let's go look at your net wage. Your net wage is given here as 3,860. Now, I want to give you a minute to quickly enter this amount in the correct T account. So again, just like I did trade union. Draw a T account for yourself and post this amount to the correct T account. So name it correctly and post it correctly. One minute. guys and girls I know you create the correct T account you should have called this T account creditors for wages remember your net salary will go to creditors for salaries and your net wage will go to creditors for wages so let's go and post the 3860 to your T account 
3860 to your creditors for wages. There it is, 3860. And what is the contra account? It will be your wages. Now, why do I use wages all the time? Let's go and see. If I look at the amount here, if I take the 3860 and I add all these, dedu all these deductions here, if I add all the circled marks here, I will get my gross wage. And remember, your gross wage went to your nominal section, where all your deductions went to your balance sheet because we owe these amounts, and then also your net wage went to balance because we owe that as well to your employee. So therefore, your debit will equal all your credits. Now, let's go and look at how to, con uh, how to post the contributions to your general ledger. Your very first one will be pension fund. Now remember, with contributions, we have a double split. We have one that goes to the expense account, and that will normally be pension fund contribution, medical fund contribution, and UIF contribution. And then the other account will be then the respective accounts. And those will be all your liabilities, your, uh, like your oldies pension fund, your health medical aid fund, and then your SARS UIF. But let's use the first one. Your very first one is pension fund. And the company or the business contributed 399 Rand to the employees that earn wages. So 399, let's go to your Aldi's pension fund. You see that we owe more to Aldi's pension fund, 399. And then we also have extra expense. And that will be your pension fund contribution. Now, you don't have one. What you can do is, again, create one if you are struggling. You don't need to do it now because it's not asked. But the next one will be asked. Let's go and look at your journal. Your next one is your medical aid fund. Now, where do I take it? I will take it to your medical aid fund expense, so your medical aid fund contribution, and then also to your liability, and that will be 180, because they contributed a rand for a rand. So again, your medical aid fund, you owe more, you owe the, ex the deduction and the extra expense, the contribution, but now your contra account, your medical aid contributions, and let's go to medical aid contributions here, create the expense on the debit side, and we are going to say February 28, we're going to say your medical aid fund or your health medical aid fund. We're going to say wage journal and we're going to say 180. And as you can see, the expense increased and that's your debit. Where's your credit? Your credit is shown here in the liability account. Now the very last one, let's quickly give you a minute to do the UIF. Quickly transfer the 53 Rand correctly to your T accounts. Guys, I know you got it right. Remember the first one, your SARS UIF, that will be an extra liability. We will use UIF contribution as the contra account, and then we'll go to your expenses. Remember all expenses in your nominal section. We'll go right February 28. We're going to say SARS UIF. We have an extra expense to employ these salary uh, wage workers, and we're going to say it is again what 53 Rand. And there you have it. Remember, UIF and expense. Now, guys, please go and practice your salaries and wage journals. Practice the posting to the general ledger. I know you can do it. Practice makes perfect. See you again soon. Bye-bye.